So let's go over to Nora. It's enough from me. Um, hi, so I'm Nora McGregor and um, I'm, I guess, a white woman, middle-aged with bright red hair and a bright, crazy top on today. <laughs> Um, so let me share my screen now. Um, we'll get going on our presentation. Okay. So as participants can see my, my presentation. So just let me know if you can't. Um, so yes, as I said, I'm Norma McGregor and I'm here from the British Library and I'm a digital curator and we are celebrating, this is a perfect timing because we're celebrating 10 years of the Digital Scholarship Training Program. So I'll explain a bit about that um, today. Hopefully it'll be a, give you some inspiration for your own institutions. So yes, I'm Norm McGregor, digital curator in the British Library's digital research team. And our team's mission is to enable the use of the British Library's digital collections for research, inspiration, creativity, and enjoyment. Um, but it's not just our own team's singular mission. So this is a shared goal across many teams of the library. Um, and one of the most effective ways that we have found to support this digital transformation over the whole last decade um, is through investing heavily and smartly in um, staff skills development. And we do that through our digital scholarship training program. So uh, running continuously since 2012, the, well, I'm gonna call it the DSTP because it's a, it's a mouthful. <laughs> Um, provides unique opportunities for staff to learn how to do cool and useful stuff, basically, uh, with our digital collections and data. I, it is a lot of fun, um, but people are also gaining valuable data literacy skills and knowledge to support emerging areas of modern scholarship in the process. Um, so again, we're celebrating 10 years of this digital scholarship training program, and it's an internal program only, and it's bespoke, and it was developed, and ma it's managed by myself, and it's um, developed by a team of five digital curators, including myself, and now we have a full-time business support admin um, who is supporting it as well. But how did it all begin, and what does it look like? So. Um, I have to be honest here, um, in the beginning, back in 2010, um, the library was recognizing that the questions that were coming to us were, were changing and they were very much of a computational nature. So people weren't just asking about, could I um, see a digitized manuscript online? They were asking us crazy questions like, can I have access to all of your digitized newspapers to do some text mining? And so, of course, we were kind of not ready to answer those questions. We didn't know what that meant. Um, and so they carved out our department um, called Digital Scholarship. And um, so, and we were all hired into it and we were existing employees in um, the British Library. So I would say we weren't always so digitally astute back in the day, um, but what we had was a real passion for learning about this new domain. So I'm a librarian and I have a master's in library and information science and, and I love digital, but um, this was kind of next level stuff and it wasn't something I had focused on in my career up until that point. So I think that's important to share that that was our, con our context. Um, so we needed to know what digital scholarship was. And as I go on, you'll, you'll, you'll learn what it is too. <laughs> um, and we needed to learn about this. So we went off to school actually. Um, so we found um, any kind of digital humanities schools. We went to data networking events. We went anywhere where anyone was talking about data, digital collections, anywhere we could find in any kind of domain. So we did focus on digital um, humanities a lot because lots of our audience are in the humanities, obviously, um, at the British Library. Um, but we basically fanned out and we did lots of, we went to data beers, which was really fun all around London. You drank beer and you learned about how people use data in interesting ways. Um, 
And what we learned alongside um, digital scholars, so we would we went to the Oxford um, University of Oxford Digital Humanities Summer Schools, that sort of thing. We wanted to learn what are what is our audience learning? What kind of skills are they picking up? And then they're going to be expecting of us. So we got in there. We were we got our hands dirty, and um, we we really dedicated ourselves to, to learning about this area. So um, some of the things we learned was, you know, the world of digital tools and methods is incredibly exciting. And so we thought we've got to let, we've got to somehow let staff know all about this, but it's practical too. So even though it's fun and exciting, <laughs> it really is practical. So a lot of the things that these digital scholars were doing, these academics or people in data science in big corporations, they were doing things that we wanted to do with our own digital collections to understand our own digital collections and data. So things like correcting OCR, normalizing, you know, tons of catalogs records, extracting information from digitized text so that we could understand them, you know, automatic cataloging of, of some materials or to support the cataloging of materials. Um, and so we realized if we could use these tools and methods too, it would be transformative for us. Um, the other thing that struck us was that these folks aren't computer and data scientists. Um, they're regular people, <laughs> just like you and me. They study humanities and they're just giving it a go. You know, um, and so we realized we can definitely try this kind of stuff out. Um, and we we also saw that a lot of the big digital projects that people were working on was in collaboration and it had all sorts of different people involved in it at different levels and with different bits of skills and, and digital skills and digital knowledge. And so we realized like, that's nice. <laughs> we don't all have to become programmers um, to support this stuff and, and get into it. There's a place for everyone in digital um, scholarship. So, you know, it's a lot of the things that um, we were noticing, it's not something that you can pick up from a digital skills survey. So this isn't about, you know, um, to, to support digital scholarship and have a digital transformation, everybody needs to go and learn how to use Excel. You know, that's the kind of stuff that you get from digital skills surveys when you ask people, you know, what do you think you need to know? People don't know what they need to know <laughs> until you're really out there and in the mix and seeing what people are, are learning. And it's often bigger than just knowing something about a particular tool. If you really want a digital transformation, you have to have the whole, um, the whole spectrum of things, not just like very specific skills of how to do a, a specific thing. And so um, it did require a lot of faith from our managers at first to kind of allow this, this time of staff to explore something very, very new and something that we weren't even sure we would apply completely. You know, we would have people come on these, these training courses. They might learn about something very technical like machine learning, um, but then, you know, they may not practically apply it. But this sort of lab mentality over time really shows um, a, a lot of development um, or, or um, a lot of benefits and value. So we do it in many different ways. And I'll explain this in um, our next, you know, in the discussion group. But we we kind of scaffold the learning experience of these topics that are are pretty heavy duty. Um, but if you scaffold it in ways that allows everybody to access bits of this information um, in different ways. So we have 21st century curatorship talks. So let's say we wanted to introduce something around um, uh, technology for um, automatic transcription of handwriting, right? Um, so we might have a 21st century talk on that. We might have a reading group. Some people will come to all of these things. Some people will not. Um, and that's fine. It's okay that people at all different levels are, um, are joining us. And then we have formal courses and workshops. We have hack and yaks where we're all learning together um, over two hours, um, just anything, just practicing and looking at an online tutorial um, and that sort of thing and learning together. So there's kind of an assumption that there's no, everybody's sharing in the knowledge um, but nobody is an expert in these, these rooms. We're all learning together and we're all sharing little bits of what we know about 
um, data and digital collections and working with them with these new tools. Um, and, and in the discussion, I hope I can cover more things of, you know, the future. So there's advanced things that people want to go on. Um, now, a lot of people want to be actually want to go on to become programmers. And so we've had to support that through um, different things like um, computing for cultural heritage. I'll explain more about that later, but that's a, a funded program um, to learn Python in the cultural heritage sector. It was a partnership with Birkbeck University and British Library and the National Archives. Um, so this is just a bit about the reach of the program. So these are the different kinds of events. We have about 1,500 people. This is just last year. 1,500 people in the library. So we hit about 20% um, of staff with this kind of training who are um, attending regularly. So we've had events of 1,000 um, signups over the course of the year, but that breaks down into about 300 people who come to multiple events. So it's a pretty good um, uh, trajectory. So just to finish up, I just wanted to kind of show there's a lot of different benefits that come from people um, going on this training program and we have um this year because it's our 10th anniversary we're going to collect a lot of case studies so you probably if you follow us on twitter you're going to hear a lot about this um but i'll show these links in the chat so graham started at the library and he was like your classic humanities guy and he um is a cataloger and he went on one of our first training programs um, one of our first courses that we've had from the very beginning on how to clean up data and he got massively hooked on everything. And the end result is, you know, in a few short years, he's learned how to program in Python. He's in the Guardian for um, a crowdsourcing project that he's done. Um, and that's all from being introduced to these kind of technical skills in the beginning with our training program. And we have lots of successories like this that are um, just really inspiring. And I wish I had more time to tell you about them. Um, but hopefully in the discussion I can. So there's more about our program at the um, online and there, there are links here too if you wanna learn more about the kind of digital transformation that some of our colleagues are going through through the training program. Um, and we can talk more about it in the discussion and I'll put some links in there for everyone. And I'll wrap up because I don't wanna take everybody else's time. <laughs>